<laughs> Back on Inside Tennessee with Mike Odom, the new president and CEO of the Knoxville Chamber. Dennis Francis, fire away. Well, I just had a question uh, after Becker read your CV uh, ad nauseum there earlier. Uh, <laughs> tell us a little bit about you. Where, where's hometown? I know you went to, it's accredited, right? LSU. Barely. <laughs> Barely. Okay. It is. Tell us a little bit about, you know, how you... Uh, <laughs> you made it out of uh, the Ninth Ward and uh, uh, other side of the state. So my, my dad was actually an FBI agent, and, and so we moved away, around a little bit when I was younger. Uh, but when I was nine, we moved to Louisiana, got below the Mason-Dixon line, and, and actually have not been above it since. Uh, town, hometown of Crowley, Louisiana, which is right in the heart of Cajun country. Um, then matriculated to LSU eventually and, and did graduate. I do have a diploma. Um, I don't know what the value of it is, but <laughs> I do have one. Uh, and then spent, after that, spent 10 years in the casino business, uh, mm -hmm. working in Mississippi and Louisiana, and uh, both north and south Mississippi. And uh, then in 2006, ha by just complete happenstance, had an opportunity to go work for the Baton Rouge Area Chamber, which, like the Knoxville Chamber, is a regional economic development organization really focused not just on attracting businesses but helping those that are here on entrepreneurship on public education post-secondary education uh, business climate infrastructure and it just I fell in love with it I really did coming from the private sector side to the non nonprofit side uh, really attracted me and or it kept me in and so then from there to, to, uh, to the state chamber to Round Rock and then to here you, you talk. Learned, go ahead. You've learned the most two important words to survive here in East Tennessee. No, what, what are they? Go Vols. Go Vols. <laughs> so, <laughs> you mentioned education, and, and Susan and John both brought it up as well. Um, when we look at um, third graders in particular in Knox County, the numbers aren't good. Um, fewer than a third are reading at or above grade level. For someone who is trying to recruit people to this community and talk about our schools, how do you answer that and what investment is the chamber prepared to make? Well, to Susan's point, the chamber through Mike and his, his work and the team's work, we have been focused on it, but it is not a problem that's going to get solved very easily or, or very quickly. Uh, early childhood education is the key. We've, we've got to get these kids into a structured educational environment as quickly as we possibly can. Um, we need to look at innovative, different, um, uh, innovative ways of, of educating beyond just what we've been doing for the last 80, 90 years. Um, we, do, we already do things, this is a little bit older, but we do STEM, STEM and we do, some of our schools here have uh, 12, 12, year, 12 month um, uh, years, which are all things that have been proven to work. Um, so we've got to continue to that. Uh, you know, I'm still a little new to, to know the, the intricacies of, of our particular situation, but in general, that's usually where we have to focus. You mentioned the investment in Round Rock. Mm -hmm. um, is that something that the chamber played a key role in there, was investing in schools, or how, how, what was that relationship like? Uh, uh, great. Actually, tremendous. Um, as, as a matter of fact, the superintendent of schools there is, it was one of the references for, for my position here, and, and he and I are still very, very good friends. Um, it, a little bit of a different environment there for suburban versus you know urban from when you talk about the the urban set parts of our schools here but um, they have been very willing to take chances they, they have been willing to try things and not worry about failing um, if, if you know a lot of schools districts and, and a lot of administrative administrations are, are don't want to talk about competition from charter schools and private schools and homeschooling where the school district there embraces it because th their mentality is if parents are selecting that other choice it's because we're not doing something right we're not meeting their needs um, so you can have that 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 really relationship with those different types of, of education because at the end of the day our only focus is how to educate these kids that's it if we do that no matter how we do it we'll be fine but i think if you look at the Knox County Schools, they have done a really nice job overall educating. So a lot of what I've been hearing these two weeks is a lot of people saying, look, people believe in our public education system. And so we need to continue to focus on that. What's been your relationship with political leaders and working with them to try to get done things that you want to get done? Well, it's funny you say that because one of my other references was the mayor of Round Rock. And, and they hold a, a key piece. Businesses at its heart businesses at their heart, excuse me, want consistency. 
they want to know what the environment is, and a lot of that takes place at your le at your league, their political <coughs> level, whether it be the city, the county, the state, or the federal. Um, and so we try to go in and, and tell them what our needs are. We try to be sensitive to what they're trying to accomplish. Um, a lot of it is communication to say, hey, this is what we're hoping you'll support. If you don't support it, can you tell us why? Um, can we, you know, there's going to be times when they say, look, we appreciate what you all are doing, but we, I can't support that. And we need to be able to um, uh, accept that and say, we understand, let's move on to the next issue. Uh, so we find that a, very, a key part of what we're trying to accomplish. One of the um, one of the things that this chamber is involved in is, is the Innovation Valley, and we had Mayor Jacobs on a couple of weeks ago on our show, and we asked him specifically. He withheld a couple hundred thousand dollars in that this past budget uh, because he said, "I want to wait on that and talk to Mike Odom," and I know you interviewed with him, and I, I think I think he's a fan of yours. But Innovation Valley is a regional concept. Is that something you will embrace um, or wait and see how it functions? Uh, when we were going through the search process and came in to do the first face-to-face -face interview with the search committee, and we had to give a presentation, it, Innovation Valley was at the core of that presentation. One, we can't compete with the Raleigh's and the Austin's and the and the Nashville's. I mean, we don't really compete with Nashville. We don't want to compete in state, but those communities outside the state like that, by ourselves as a city, we have to do it as a region. There are too many assets that are not in the city core to do it. Um, Mayor Jacobs was was very upfront. As a matter of fact, he called me prior to me even starting to say, "Hey." Welcome, I'm cutting $200,000. Uh, <laughs> but, but what he said, and, and I can appreciate this, and John, to your question related to, to, to our elected officials, he said, I have to be able to, and the, and the commission has to be able to go to the, the voters and say, this is where we're, we are making these investments. And I'm not comfortable right now that I can re get the return on investment, if you, if you will, a business term, to justify those dollars. And as a soon-to-be resident and taxpayer, I appreciate that. But what he also said, and, and it has been very open since then, is bring me a plan. Show me how you can use these dollars to, to help the people, not, not just of Knox County. He is, has a regional mindset, um, and he believes in, in the regionalism as well. And so that is, our, is what we're going to do. So um, absolutely do I believe in Innovation Valley 100%. Uh, our, job right now as a chamber is to enhance it, to grow it, and, and to really produce the meaningful, measurable results that any of our investors and partners expect. We're going to talk more right after this, a short break on Inside Tennessee.